Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou. welcome back to my channel. Gravity, we know it all too well from school, or do we? There is a huge unsolved problem with gravity that scientists have been scratching their heads over. This has given rise to many bizarre theories to try and explain it. In this week's video, we're going to talk about gravity and why it might not be real. So let's begin. We all remember back in school learning about Newton's description of gravity, a force that acts between any two masses. It wasn't until many, many years later that I was introduced to Einstein's theory of gravity that transformed our understanding of gravity to something else. Einstein realized that actual acceleration should be indistinguishable from the apparent acceleration that's produced by gravity. For example, if you were in a rocket ship traveling at 9.8 meters per second, you would feel no different from being on Earth. You would feel the same force pulling you to the floor of the rocket as you would feel if you were on the Earth being pulled to the ground. If then you were to shine a laser on this rocket ship, instead of the laser traveling straight from one side of the ship to the other, there would be a displacement due to the distance traveled of the ship. This means that gravity should affect light as well, and indeed it does as we've seen by gravitational lensing effects measured of massive galaxy clusters. These objects have gravity that is so strong it's able to bend the light of distant galaxies. Einstein described gravity as a result of matter warping space and time around it. It is an emergent phenomenon, but this description is widely different from other fundamental forces. We've established four fundamental forces. The strong force acts between subatomic particles holding things like protons and neutrons together. And as its name suggests, this is the strongest of the four fundamental forces. But it acts only over very small distances, atomic distances. The electromagnetic force is about 100 times weaker than the strong force. It acts over much larger distances. The electromagnetic force causes charged particles to interact with one another. And it's responsible for the behavior of electric and magnetic fields. Then we have the weak force. This is 10,000 times weaker than the electromagnetic force. You're weak, weak. But again, it works on subatomic scales. This force is responsible for radioactive decay of nuclei. So it's pretty clear that these three forces relate to interactions between quantum particles. Gravity, on the other hand, according to Einstein's description, has nothing to do with quantum particles, and it doesn't have anything to do with the interaction between two masses. It's simply an observation of space-time curvature due to the masses. In fact, it's not really a force at all, but Einstein's theory doesn't really explain what gravity is either, and what is space-time curvature anyway? While Newton's theory of gravity is more force-like, we know it's wrong because it only acts on things with mass, so not on light. The other thing that stands out is the strength of gravity. Now, you probably think that gravity is strong, right? I mean, it has the strength to hold entire planets in orbit around our sun. It also holds us to the ground, preventing us from floating off into deep space. But just think, it takes an entire planet of mass to do this. And even then, we can jump quite high. Even ants, tiny little ants, are capable of moving about despite the entire force of our planet pulling them down. In comparison to the other forces, gravity is incredibly weak. The fact that you can hold a paperclip up with a magnet demonstrates that gravity is much weaker than the electromagnetic force the strength of the tiny magnet compared to the strength of a huge planet. The strengths of the other forces are relatively comparable to each other, but when it comes to gravity, gravity is about a billion trillion trillion times weaker than the weak force. So what's going on? In theoretical physics, the hierarchical problem is that there is a huge discrepancy between gravity and the other fundamental forces. Scientists have no idea why, and it's an outstanding problem in physics. Right now, there is still no good explanation of what gravity is and where it comes from. In fact, some scientists don't even believe it exists. 
the Higgs boson or God particle that was discovered in 2012 at the Large Hadron Collider is a fundamental particle associated with the Higgs field. This field exists throughout our universe and it's believed to be the source of mass of fundamental particles such as electrons and quarks and therefore all matter gets its mass from this field. The Higgs boson is thought to be directly correlated to the strength of gravity. So the more mass that the Higgs boson has, the stronger gravity would be for all matter in the universe. So instead of asking, why is gravity so weak? We could instead ask, why is the Higgs boson so light? As the Higgs boson moves through the Higgs field, it interacts with other particles. The strength of this interaction is proportional to what that particle's mass is. The Higgs boson therefore gives mass to all other particles, but similarly all of the particles will give mass back to the Higgs. The mass of the Higgs boson that we can actually measure is the bare mass of the Higgs boson plus quantum corrections due to other particle interactions. Now, this is kind of a weird concept, but the best way to think of it is to imagine that the Higgs boson is a cold chicken and the Higgs field is an oven. After going in the oven, the chicken's temperature rises. It's taken energy from the ambient temperature of the oven. The Higgs boson is just like that. It receives corrections from the ambient quantum energy of the universe. From theory, we would therefore expect the measured Higgs mass to be close to the value of the Planck mass. Now, the Planck mass is a fundamental constant that relates to quantum energy. However, it turns out when you measure this, it's not. The Higgs mass is 10 to the 17 or 10 million billion times smaller than the Planck mass. Something must be happening to cancel out the quantum corrections because we're not seeing them. Is this just a coincidence? Do these numbers even actually mean anything? Well, it turns out that if the mass of the Higgs boson were just a few times heavier and everything else stayed the same, then protons would no longer be able to assemble into atoms. It would be impossible to form complex structures like our stars, our planets, or even us. This means that Higgs mass, and hence gravity, cannot be natural. It's just too perfect. This could be a whole video in itself, so I'm not going to say any more on this, but maybe I'll add that physicist Stephen Hawking didn't believe that the LHC would ever discover the Higgs boson. But when it was discovered, he said that this particle could one day be responsible for the destruction of the entire universe. The Higgs boson doomsday is a real thing, and it's super scary. Getting back on track, general relativity cannot be right. Besides the inconsistencies that have been explained away by dark matter and dark energy, it also fails to incorporate quantum theory. Quantum theory has been able to describe the subatomic universe to astounding precision and able to account for all the fundamental forces, all except for gravity. General relativity assumes that we know exactly where particles are and how they're moving, while quantum theory shows that this is impossible. This means that quantum theory and gravity cannot be combined into a unified theory of everything as they currently stand. One big breakthrough, however, was superstring theory. Superstring theory proposes point-like particles are instead replaced by one-dimensional strings. Now, string theory is kind of weird, and for this reason, I'm not going to go into it in this video, but string theory requires the universe to have more than three spatial dimensions that we're familiar with. In some cases, it could be as many as 10. Currently, the best explanation that they've came up with about our gravity problem is that gravity could be leaking into these extra dimensions, and that's why it's so weak. Unfortunately, right now, if there are more than four dimensions out there, we have no way to detect them. Our best hopes of trying to figure out exactly what is wrong with gravity lies in further research of the Higgs particle, even if that means the Higgs boson doomsday. That's all for this week's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.